Let me ask you a question, and I want you to be honest. Are you engaged in the kind of remarkable work that you know you're capable of? Or do you feel like you're stuck in a dead-end job? Do you think of quitting as an admission of failure or as a sound business strategy? Well, stay right there. Don't move, because we're about to cover seven key lessons from an enlightening book that will teach you about how to stop wasting your time on dead ends and instead focus all your energy on the stuff that makes you remarkable. I'm talking about The Dip by Seth Godin. Before we jump into the lessons from this book, let's talk about what Seth calls the curves that define the situations we face. First, let's talk about the dip. The dip is the long slog between starting and mastery. Here's what the dip looks like. Initially, trying something new is fun and you see results quickly. Then you reach the dip, right here. The dip is the chasm between mediocrity and success. Getting through it requires hard work and dedication. For example, if you want to master a skill, if you want to be truly remarkable, you have to push through the dip. You have to persevere. Now, let's talk about the cul-de-sac. The cul-de-sac is a situation where you work and you work and you work and nothing much changes. It doesn't get a lot better. It doesn't get a lot worse. Here's what it looks like. It's a long and painfully uneventful trudge that never pays off. A cul-de-sac is a dead end. It's a path to nowhere. It's a waste of your time, your effort, and your talent. But it feels safe, so people stick with it. It's the job a person refuses to quit, or the path a person refuses to abandon, even when they know they should. Almost every situation we face can be defined as either a dip or a cul-de-sac. However, Seth tells us about one more curve, a bonus curve he calls the cliff. The cliff is a quasi-curve. It's not really a curve. It's a situation where you can't quit until you fall off and the whole thing falls apart. It's a path to disaster. Here's what the cliff looks like. The cliff is a situation where you get a little reinforcement for your effort over time until one day the music stops and the party is over. You get the same disastrous result as the cul-de-sac, but the cliff has a much more dramatic ending. Now that you're familiar with the curves, let's study the lessons from this book. Lesson one, the dip is a barrier to entry. In a competitive world, adversity is your ally. The harder it gets, the better chance you have of insulating yourself from the competition. The truth is that most of your competition is not willing to endure the dip. And so, the dip is your opportunity to create distance between you and the competition. The dip is the secret to success. It's the fastest path to your goal. And anything worthwhile, anything worth your time, effort, and resources probably involves a dip. Now, let's move on to the next lesson. Lesson two. The value is concentrated at the top. Seth explains this concept as follows. The dip creates scarcity. Scarcity creates value. The market winners win really big. Number one makes exponentially more than number 10. Let's use soft drink sales to explain this concept. The percentage of sales are skewed highly to the left in the short head of the graph, which is comprised of just a few market winners namely Coke and Pepsi. Everyone else in that industry is fighting for crumbs. The value at the top is so much higher for two reasons. First, in a super crowded marketplace, people want an easy and reliable choice. They pick the brand they know will deliver, no thought necessary. It's a quick and easy decision. The second reason value is so much higher at the top is because competition up there is intense and it requires substantial resources to play the business game at that level. Competing with Coke or Pepsi's distribution systems or marketing operations is almost certainly suicide. However, the little guy or gal, the small business, still has hope because the overall market consists of lots of micro-markets, and each micro-market has a winner. Thus, the solution for small business people is to niche down. Find a micro-market and aim at one single bowling pin to knock over. This is the key to taking market share from the dominant players. 
Now, let's move on to the next lesson. Lesson 3. Getting to the top requires focus, not diversification. Seth says, Just about everything you learned in school about life is wrong. But the wrongest thing might very well be this. Being well-rounded is the secret to success. The market rewards the exceptional people and companies. Narrow your focus to the skills, plans, and items that truly matter. The things that make you or your team remarkable. Seth gives us a great example. He explains that a woodpecker that spends its day jumping around tree to tree, pecking 20 times or so before moving on, does nothing more than stay busy. It does not find dinner. However, a woodpecker that focuses its energy into one tree gets plenty of food. Now, let's talk about the next lesson. Lesson 4. Learn to quit strategically. Strategic quitting is the secret of successful organizations. Reactive quitting and serial quitting, however, are the bane of those that strive and fail to get what they want. Strategic quitting involves an honest assessment of what kind of situation you're in right now. So, the first thing you need to do is determine whether you're in a dip, a cliff, or a cul-de-sac. If you're in a cul-de-sac or a cliff situation, it's probably time to quit. Don't waste any more of your time, energy, and resources on activities that don't matter. Pivot to a better plan. If you're in the dip, you're probably on the right path, but you need to be ready to do what's necessary to make it to the other side. Let's move on to the next lesson. Lesson 5. Plan for the dip. Seth says, The essential thing to know about the dip is that it's there. Knowing that you're facing a dip is the first step in getting through it. If you make an honest assessment of the situation and you don't feel like you have the will, the resources, or the time to make it through the dip, don't start the journey. Quit now and devote your efforts to something that matters to you. Quitting in the middle of the dip is a total waste. Moreover, you need to outline your quitting strategy before the discomfort of the dip sets in. This will help you avoid making an impulsive decision to quit. Additionally, if you have an objective plan, It'll help you determine if you're actually in a cul-de-sac, in which case, quitting would be a great idea. If you determine that you're in the dip, then follow lesson number six. Lean into the dip. Seth tells us, never quit something with great long-term potential just because you can't deal with the stress of the moment. Successful people see the dip for what it is. It's an opportunity for greatness. Once they know they're in the dip, they lean into it and push through. As we discussed earlier, the dip is the way to your goal. Don't avoid it. Attack it head on and get to the other side. Here's the final lesson. Lesson 7. Go big or go home. Seth says it like this. The next time you catch yourself being average, when you feel like quitting, realize that you have only two good choices. Quit or be exceptional. Average is for losers. You are astonishing. You are remarkable. Be the best in the world at what you do. Pursue the activities that leverage your talents or your team's talents. Give it everything you've got. Choose remarkable and be a superstar. Well, e-learners, that's it for The Dip by Seth Godin. I hope you enjoyed the lessons from this fantastic little book that is absolutely packed with useful and inspirational information. And I'll see you next time on Mentally Fit.